<laughs> well, so Sophie, one of my favorite things also to ask writers is if they had a piece of advice for for writers, new writers, what would it be? Um, it would be um, to ignore some advice out there. Uh, one being <laughs> write daily or um, read voraciously because I think a lot of people, I remember someone said to me at one point when I said, I think I wanna be a writer. And she said, well, writers write, Sophie, and I don't see you writing. Um, <laughs> and a lot of people's lives um, are so difficult, so crowded with responsibilities that to write daily would be very difficult. So, um, but another friend said to me, Sophie, I know you're a writer, because I've read what you write. Mm -hmm. So um, my advice would be to just write any way you can in cars, in you know, weekends when the kids go away fishing, write in bits and bobs and bursts, mm -hmm. but just refuse to give up on your project. That would be my advice. I like that. I like that. Don't give up on your project. Yeah. Just don't let it die. Yeah. And lastly, Sophie, um, if you could read an excerpt from one of your short stories, that would be fabulous. And if you could tell us why you've chosen to read this particular story. Okay, well, it, um, here, here's the cover. Um, yep. I love the cover. Um, I know, there's Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> it's this the story is called 33rd Street. And this little excerpt, um, just fits nicely into two minutes and is a little bit zippy so <laughs> and, it'll, <laughs> and, and it'll, it'll it'll give everyone a lovely uh sense of how beautiful your writing is too so this is perfect oh, I hope so. <laughs> this one's a little funny i think this story is called 33rd street her rule for the to-do list is the hardest thing first so mm -hmm informing the school that Rilla contracted head lice that one time, or purging the basement laundry room after the sewer backup, or mundane horrors like organizing all the paperwork at tax time. But now that the twins have started grade one and she finally has time, the hardest thing is simply to begin, to walk into her garage studio and get the damn brush on the canvas. Today is such a day, but when she does, Mariah finds a dead cat lying on the concrete floor. The way it reclines for a weird moment reminds her of her nude modeling days as an art student in college. She shrieks and jumps back, clutching her plaid flannel painting shirt around her. The cat lying in a patch of sunlight is so clearly not sleeping. Its body contorts backwards in an acute arch and the lips pull away in a grimace. Watery vomit lies in a puddle beside its head. Oh my God, Mariah says, I don't own a cat, and her eyes scan wildly. The north facing window stands open, left that way to air out the studio after she'd cleaned the brushes with turpentine last night. The cat is massive, black with white paws and a white bib extending up its throat and over the top lip of his jowls. The white upper lip, the long white whiskers, the little black goatee on his chin, and then the sheer size of, size of him make him unmistakable. Louise's cat, Stash. Louise lives across the street in a tiny stucco bungalow behind a high manicured hedge. She is 92. This four block stretch of 33rd Street resonates with that hedge, manicured, immaculate, and populated thickly with retirees. Mariah and Liam's place, a blazingly white Victorian row house they recently acquired when the Edelsons moved to assisted living, has exploded at the hands of their three children, a trampoline and skateboards, bikes, chalk drawings all over the sidewalk, dandelions, and strange modernist sculptures in the front yard. She sinks to her knees and examines him. She sees swirls of color in the cat's vomit, barium yellow, cobalt violet, a swipe of shields green on Max's white bib. The pads of his paws show violet and yellow and red. A trail of smudged footprints leads from her palette on the counter down and across the floor. He must have licked the paint on his paws and poisoned himself in the night while they slept. As if the chaos of their yard isn't enough, now she is responsible 
for poisoning the venerable cat of the street's oldest resident. That's good. <laughs> you could just picture <laughs> that happening. <laughs> So you have to read Waking Leonard and other stories to find out <laughs> how this goes. How guilty is this woman? Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. So Sophie Stocking, a great big thank you for being a guest on All About Canadian Books today. It was such a pleasure to meet you and to read your collection of short stories. Thank you so much, Crystal. This is such an important uh, forum. Thank you for creating it. It's, it's really wonderful. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. And to all our viewers out there, thank you so much for watching. I will put links down below in the description box with links to Sophie's website and also to Guernica's website so you can purchase a copy of her book. Thank you for watching. <laughs>